All right, guys. So I'm back. I've got uh, Chris with Financial Fitness in the bottom, and I've got uh, the bar with Ironside Ranch. We're back here. I've got Ironside Ranch and Financial Fitness, and we are talking about straight blade razors. Whip that, whip that out, Mackie. Whip, <laughs> whip that. Show me some Don Draper like action. Yeah, I, I brought it specifically because I knew I was going to bring that point up. Your personal life, and we'll and we'll make their way into your business life. And, uh, and, 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 you know, building good habits of making those good decisions and not making decisions based on emotion. Uh, you know, one of the things that I do every single morning is I get up and actually, this is kind of different, but I do a straight razor shave every single morning. And uh, that's because it forces me to focus for 15 minutes every single day, right when I first wake up. And uh, it, it gets my day started with something that is, that is purely focused. I can't do anything else. Right, and so and uh, that's why I do it. I love the channel in the description. Oh, I'm going to on that. Yeah, I'm because I'm, I built a channel to teach you young men how to weld. So, and Mac, so plug, your, plug your channel. This is going to the front of the video. Oh, um, uh, Ironside Ranch, we do, you know, we're all about self-sufficiency. It started out as a farming channel, and now it's worked into everything that's, that's involved with being self-sufficient. So learning how to grow food, how to raise food, understanding finances and building businesses, everything that you guys want to talk about that's self-sufficiency related. Start that and to do, like I said, every day you start with that straight razor shape or something, whatever it is, do do yoga, Pilates, whatever, whatever floats your boat. To me, this is just cool and it's kind of fun. And so, uh, and my wife bought it for me and says something that I want to do every single morning and uh, it forces me to have to focus every day right at the start of the day and and i do that before my workout and and whether you know like i said you can you can do your yoga read your bible whatever it is pick something that forces you to focus for 15 minutes right when you get up and that'll start your day off well so true so you're true. right it's you know i heard mark moss say uh, he would do butter coffee in the morning which i love i got a video uh, yeah it, it's, it gives your brain the fats it needs it gives you some caffeine and he said he would get a candle, light the candle, and just try not to let any thought get into your mind and just focus on the flame, focus on the flame, focus on the flame. And he would do that every morning for, you know, 20 minutes. I don't know how long. Okay. But um, I never did the focus on the flame thing, but I did do butter coffee and work out. That's kind of my, that's my zen. That's your thing. Okay. So, so for the guys that haven't done the butter coffee, I'll link to that as well. I've got a video on that. It kind of comes from a guy named uh, a brand called Bulletproof Coffee. That's where I found it. Um, it is laxative, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like don't, right now. Yeah, don't hit some butter coffee and get in your truck. Okay, it's not like that. <laughs> all right, you need to hit some butter coffee when you wake up. Right? Yeah. Keep you regular. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 kind of one thing. It, with with morning rituals, to Mackie's point, um, I had a mentor tell me a long time ago. He's like, "Look, there's 31 proverbs. There's 31 days in a month. Some months have less, but there's 31 days in a month. Read proverbs one day for the day of the week or for the day of the month." Yeah, I, we, my wife and I do that a lot, actually. Yeah, I do that as a habit. You know, just as a habit. Some days I mess, but sometimes I'm really on a roll. And every time I go through it, I'm like, man, I don't remember reading this. You know what I mean? Like you'll roll through there and, and you'll just have little themes, you underlying things. And you're like, man, I, up to this point, for as long as I've done it, there's been years where I've taken off of it. But, but for as long as I've done it, I probably read through it thousands of times. I still don't have it and really truly memorized. You can't like, exhaust it. You just can't exhaust it. It's no, like I mean, you can't. I mean, look, for, for you guys that are like, what, what is that? Proverbs is in the Old Testament. Uh, it was written by a guy named Solomon, who's the son, son of David. And if you've ever heard of David and Goliath, David is a little shepherd boy that goes out and becomes a king of Jerusalem, essentially, like the king of the Israelites. Uh, he has a son named Solomon, and Solomon becomes the wealthiest man to our knowledge that has ever lived. And, he, and the dude also has like 780 something wives. So, like, the almost dude, a thousand with concubines. So yeah, if you add in all his, I mean, the guy is busy, right? So he's the wealthiest dude in the world, and he's not like running like the Jeff Bezos model where he's dating like 51 year old single mommy of three. Like he, he's really <laughs> running. All right. He's I'm really going to add something to that, though. And we talked about it earlier. We talked about women and how they can mess you up. Mm. At the end of King Solomon's life, he let so many different women in his life that had different gods, they strayed him away from where he began. And that was the wisest man on the face of the earth. 
Well, look at Proverbs. I mean, about half of the Proverbs are written about staying away from troublesome women in some way, shape, or form. And uh, so, I mean, Solomon was definitely, you know, his, his, his weakness and his vice was women, but he knew the right way to do it. And, you know, people talk about the, uh, in, in the Old Testament where, um, you know, uh, polygamy versus uh, monogamy and, and, and this, this whole debate about it. And uh, it's, the reality of it is that there's nowhere in the Old Testament where they say it's a good idea. <laughs> that's true yeah it's true so so in the previous video we were talking about that i mean i think young guys that's just something that they fall into right where it's just like you got your you get your own place and then you start dating and you have some success and then she's spending the night and then it starts to and then there's a toothbrush there and then all of a sudden you're into a relationship that you never stopped and had a conversation about where are we going from here mm -hmm. so I mean, I'll leave you guys to make their own decisions on that, but just be smart about that, that type of situation, because that, that can seriously set you back. So relationships should be intentional, just like anything else that we do. And if you let it be accidental, it will be an accident. Mm -hmm. yep. That's so, it's super true. And then you find yourself three or four years later where like that spark isn't even there and you're just like, what are we doing? You're just going through the motions and it's... yeah garbage and i mean i've had somebody tell me one time you're just practicing divorce yeah right you, you got like this girl that girl that and it, eventually you're like oh i've been divorced three four five times oh that's freaking great it's gonna work well when you when you end up dividing half of your shit with the state involved when you sign some paperwork you know like so just be cautious of that i would say to most guys because we have an entire generation of women at this point in time where they were just told one thing and i just don't think that's consistent with anything historical and anything to do with human nature when you're divorce is outrageously expensive people don't ever realize that you know there's always the jokes about it that i would divorce her but I, you know I, I can't afford to or something along those lines but cheaper to uh, keep her. divorce is outrageously expensive i lost everything i have when i went through my divorce and, uh, you know, I moved to Birmingham with a cast iron skillet and a sleeping bag. Um, and I was, I slept on the floor of my apartment that I could barely afford for the first six months I was here. So, you, you know, people don't realize how, how unbelievably expensive it is. Yep. Yep. And if you have a kid involved or anything like that, even if it's a girlfriend situation, it's almost even worse. If you had a, girl, a girlfriend yeah. and a kid, it can turn into, uh, it, it can turn into a, a crazy circus. And, and just know women are playing chess men are playing checkers it's very they're they're i'm telling you they're the most they're really i'm not gonna say manipulative my wife's awesome she's my number one person in my life but man they will they can work you over they can get you right where they want you and then they can have a kid and they really got you so just be careful hypergamy is a real thing you know and so yeah so i mean we've hit we hit that you know, pretty intently, I would say. I'd say, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would say. I mean, one of those signs like, uh, explore with fun. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, so learning a trade, I, I'm big on the, I have a question for both of you guys. So when I was a younger guy, and I'm talking 22, I'm, I've, I've moved out of state at this point in time. I'm in a, in a, a roommate situation with my buddies, and you're, you're kind of living hand to mouth in a way what you're bringing in regardless of where you're working whether you're running for yourself or you're working for someone else what you're bringing in is kind of what you're spending at that point in time is very common and i was pretty i was set up pretty good at 18 i had sold a lawn and landscape business i had everything paid for prior to that i already had my diesel truck i had all those things checked off and then i got a check on top of that right so i was i was set up pretty good but i didn't have the mentality of paying myself first until much later and it's cost me substantially when you look back, if you think investing is, is one of those things, like wait until you get the bill or something like that. One of those, I know you've heard that where it's like, if, if you think investing is expensive, wait until you get the bill for not doing it. Mm. Something like that. Same thing with your health. But those are two things where in, in, in the terms of investment, I, I see it in the physical world and your own body and your own skill set, And then also financially, which I think a lot of guys kind of think, oh, I'll deal with that later. And that's one of my biggest regrets. It's like when I was 22, I was always investing in myself, but I wasn't necessarily building myself, quote, a portfolio and, and developing the emotional skills of like, can you handle a 50% downturn or any of those type of things? Like, do you have conviction? Do you do research on it? I wasn't really thinking. I was kind of like, oh, one day I'll build a business, I'll sell a business, and then I'll deal with investing after that when, I'm, when I've got my cash. 
Yeah, you know, I think this this kind of falls into the trap that a lot of people make when they first start like a business, and you'll see it all the time. And they'll say, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna not take a salary for X amount of time, or I'm gonna not do you know I'm gonna not uh, take care of myself in some capacity, and I can handle that for a short period of time." And though that's true, that should definitely not be your plan A because it doesn't work for very long. And uh, even if you're extremely passionate about what you're doing, you're only going to be willing to do it for nothing for so long. And it's usually about half the time you think that you're realistically going to be able to do it. So um, I just I, I think that when I see that and I see people say that it's one of the first red flags. If somebody were to come to me and say, hey, I want you to invest in my business. And I would say, when are you going to start paying yourself? And they say, oh, I'm not going to pay myself for two years. I'd say that's a problem. Um, and that is that that shows me kind of poor planning on the aspect of your business. You have to take care of yourself. And I'm not saying right yourself that you should be borrowing enough money to pay yourself $100,000 a year salary, but you should be able to pay yourself and keep your four walls intact, right? Your housing, lights and water and your food and take care of those things from the beginning. Um, and and if, if your plan does not incorporate that, it's a bad plan. <clears throat> well, I don't know where you were at. Well, what do you think about your guy? I mean, how did you do your money when you were 20, 22? Well, I wasted a lot of time, but I never was a big spender. I, I wasted time, not money. Okay. I was pretty good about buying used trucks, you know, only not buying things I couldn't afford. I, I, re- I never borrowed to consume. That's the number one rule that I learned early and it really helped me out. And when I would buy a truck, I'd always get a heavier duty truck that I could use for work later. Mm. You know, it's kind of double a double purpose. Yep. Um, th- those kind of small things really helped me not that put off the instant gratification. That's the main thing I see guys falling for. They get this side by side in their mind. They get, they get these things in their mind. They can't put that out. It's yeah. like, just, just quit thinking about that. And stay focused on the goal. And that, for me, that's retire at 40. And I'll never retire. I like working. I like, but I won't have to go to work if I don't want to. I'll have enough assets that pay me to own them. Rental properties and, you know, businesses like this gym rep business, these kind of businesses that, that pay to, to own. That, that's my goal. And I guess where I messed up the most, like for rental properties, the only thing I regret about rental properties is not starting it sooner. I don't know why I waited so long. That was really stupid. I wasted a lot of time. The thing I regret about welding is not going harder. But you got to be the bull. If you're cleaning the porta johns at work and that's your job, do the best you can. Bring as much value as possible. Somebody will see it and you will move up. You won't be doing that job very long. You, you have to be the bull. Whatever you're doing, you've got to be the bull. And if you'll do that, and I had to learn this, I wasted a lot of time before I figured that out. But now, hindsight looking back, if I'd have been a bull and came home after when I was tired and practiced welding or learned about rental property or whatever it is you, you want to do, run at it, do it, write it down, think about it, and then do it. Did you, a lot of your capital as a younger guy go into your gear? Is that where your money was going in 2022? 2022. Like bars or where is it going? When I was 22, I got married when I was 23. I was rigging a welding truck out. I was rigging a welding truck out around 22. And I actually, my wife sold her 401k, we moved in a camper. I rigged out a welding truck with money. I mean, it was, you know, some sketchy, I'm kind of a risk on kind of guy. <laughs> and I didn't even know how to pipe weld, man. <laughs> so I took my motorcycle and rode out to a pipeline and looked at the welds and I thought, I can do that. Mm-hmm. So, and then I started practicing, but I still had that little kid in me. Everybody's got a little bitch in them. Yeah. And uh, I didn't want to practice every day. And my wife was kind of like, hey, you know, we're living in a camper. Uh, you need to, what, what are you going to do? And I was like, okay. She, she, <laughs> right. she, didn't, she didn't say that, but she was looking at me funny. I was like, all right, yeah. so I had to get serious and go. You know, when you I got married about, young, which I guess was, was helpful for you. For some guys, it definitely is. I'm mean, getting married 23 is young, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it was. Well, it was helpful because Stacey told you to get your shit together. Yeah. 
it made me it made me better yeah yeah that's interesting what about you what, what were you doing i mean you you were over you were over in the middle east for a while so you were getting a paycheck and your your expenses were kind of paid well you know i went to college first so when i was 18 i kind of got a wild hair up my ass and i went up to alaska so i went to college up and i graduated from university of alaska up in fairbanks and uh, <laughs> so I, I just uh, I was originally I wanted to go to West Point and uh, this all of a sudden kind of changed my mind and uh, <laughs> dropped the last minute application to UAF and and went up there and then about six months later I had a buddy of mine get back from airborne school and I went and I thought well that sounds like a lot of fun so I went and enlisted the next day and uh, served in I was in the Alaska National Guard up there and uh, and then after I commissioned I uh, went down to, to Fort Benning and then on to Afghanistan from there so when I was 22 and this is why I say I, I was way behind what it sounds like like you were at Travis I was spending money I was you know spending money at strip clubs at the bars at pretty much whatever I could throw my money at and uh, you know one of the things that um, at military banks will give you at, at if you're on path to commission is they give you a $25,000 loan at two percent interest now, if I could do that again, that $25,000 would be used on something that I could make money from and buy assets. Well, what are you going to do when you're 22 years old, 21 years old, and they give you that money? Well, I went out and bought some new guns. I bought scuba diving gear. <laughs> I, I spent up like $1,500 at a strip club like the night it hit my bank account. <laughs> so I, I didn't start getting wise until I got a lot older, and I didn't start making good decisions really until – um, you know, I got out of the military and kind of got away from that, that mentality and realized that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and uh, had to make some tough choices and had to grow up a little bit. Okay. How long did it take you to get there, Mackie? How old were you when you decided, hey, I got to be an entrepreneur? Um, you know, it really, it was, I was tired of working for other people, but if you've ever worked for the government, I was really tired of working for the government. And uh, I was really tired of all the stupid stuff. And I think kind of the final straw for me was when I was at Fort Bliss, we uh, had, we had just gotten back from deployment. We were getting, everybody was getting their, their, um, you know, post-deployment leave. And we were, I was going to be going to my, my ex-wife and I, we had had a trip planned to go to Iceland. And uh, like a day before we left, I mean, we had paid hotels, everything. We dropped several thousand dollars from our deployment money on this trip. And they told us they may not allow us to go because it was overseas and they wanted to restrict travel for safety or some stupid crap like that. And uh, really, it was just somebody up top wanting to flex your muscles a little bit. And at, when I remember when that happened, and my wife and I just looked at each other, and we were just like, this is ridiculous. Like, for somebody to have that much control of my life. And it kind of went the opposite way from there. And we just decided, I don't want to ever have to work for anybody else again. So when I got out of the military, I worked in corporate America for about a year and a half while I set up different businesses and got things going here with our, our property inspection company in Birmingham. And um but uh, but that was the last time I said I'm never working for somebody else again. That's so that's when I grew up, I guess, is when that happened. Afghanistan, I grew up quite a bit there and had my eyes opened up to a lot of those things. That's interesting, man. I mean, yeah, cool. for me, I mean, I had the good fortune of not making crazy mistakes early on, uh, but I didn't understand the mentality of an. I understood entrepreneurship or so i thought i was like yo it, it's gonna be hard it is what it is you're gonna have to grunt through it the the people that win don't quit that's the game as long yeah. as as long as you keep getting up off the mat they can't be mm -hmm. now sometimes you're working on this on a stupid idea and it's not working out and that's that's i've had that case where i, I should have called it several years early but my thing because i was always a smaller guy i'm like five eight five nine my license says five nine but you know i'm somewhere between five eight five nine you know and when i was younger i could never get past six once 165 or whatever but i would i would win absolutely any fight i got in in high school or under period i just because you just don't quit that's how you that's how you win you just don't quit you just don't quit and you find a neck that's it. That's all you got to do. But like, so I approach business the same way where I was like, yeah, if there's a wall, I'm going to smash through it. You know, if there's a giant, I'm going to choke them out. Like I'll, I'll just keep just going until, until, you know, until I win potentially. But what I didn't do that I, I regret the most that I, that I now, I, I, I mentally think through is I didn't view uh, myself in terms of a balance sheet or I didn't have a balance sheet. Let's put it that way. I didn't, I didn't record. You can't measure, you can't manage what you can't measure. And so I didn't measure quote my net worth because I thought, well, there's net worth there, but it's not, it's not seven figures. It's not really worth talking about. Right. And then, and, 
And so I, I regretted most about not having that balance sheet and then having the mentality of how should I orchestrate my balance sheet? You know, should I have 50% of it in things that are, are solid gold, you know, or, 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 you know, asset producing, or income producing, should I have 10% of it in speculations? Right. Should I have, you know, I didn't really mentally think through this. I was just kind of like throwing a pitch after a pitch and a punch after a punch. And if something came my way, I just solved it then. And so in a way I was just kind of firefighting through life where I was like, Oh, I was just doing what I do. Fire pops up. I'd pop it out. And that caught up with me later in my twenties when I just had too many fires going on and I got, I had too many projects going on and I had too many businesses going on. I had too many, too much stuff. And, and so I would, I would say that my biggest thing is like, I just didn't mentally really conceptualize how I should have been allocating myself, even in terms of time or even in terms of building skills, you know? I've never, I've never really budgeted, never tried to budget. Uh, I, I'll probably would be better off like that. Uh, but my theory was, my wife tried to do it one time. She said, well, we need to quit. Uh, we need to do a budget. And I thought, well, is there something we need to buy that we can, or what is it? She's like, I said, well, we need to do this because we don't know our money. You know, the whole reason yeah. to do a budget. I said, well, we'll just make more money. That's that would be the better option instead of trying to save money. We'll just make more money. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's just kind of been my, you know, your thing. Even if it was working a weekend, you know what I mean. And if it was, yeah. if I had to do that, then fine. That's what I'll do. Yeah. But it, it, I would have been better off if I would have budgeted my way through life. I, but I'm not bad about buying new boats and new this and new that. I, I'm pretty much, I would get just what was good enough to get me through that. Because I knew I'd be over it. You know, that's I would funny, decide Oh, I'm sorry. I, I said, that's funny because my wife and I have pretty much had the opposite approach on things is that we, uh, we, at the end of every month, we do our budget for the next month. We both look at it and agree to it and say, okay, this is where our money's going. This is what we're spending it on. And then I've got on my laptop, I've probably got 30 different budgets and cost analysis and everything for different business ideas that I've either thought about that are either gotten thrown out because I did the budget or uh, they're on the back burner right now while I'm working for investors or partners or whatever it is. Uh, but, you know, we, we kind of approach things from the, 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 I guess, the complete opposite end where everything is on, on spreadsheets and numbers. And I think that might be a little bit more of a personality thing as far as like, um, you know, obviously what you're doing is working for you. And, and so it, and so I'm not, well, not saying it. it's kind of funny to into the well, I, is, hold I on. said is I, would be better off. I would be better off if I would have been budgeting. That's for sure. Well, when it comes to your rental properties, though, you do budget. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we know what our bills are. We know, I mean, we know all. Mm -hmm. but we don't and we do more now way more now yeah we know uh, she does the spreadsheets and all that yeah. i'm running and doing what needs to be done she does the bills and she, she she'll have it all out and she'll say hey this is what we got in this this business this business this business checking savings you know so if you want to call that budgeting i don't think that's really budgeting though yeah. it's it's kind of you know What's unique there is that Stacey's is pulling in your weakness in a way. Right. Uh, for a single guy, if you're if you're a single guy and you know that's it, a bad spot to have a girlfriend role at, like with all your finances and whatnot. But you do need to surround yourself with people that can help fill in your weaknesses. I think the biggest thing is you're not going to know what your weaknesses are until you're pretty self introspective about it. And then once you know what your weaknesses are, then you're like, okay, these these are my weaknesses. I need to hire or I need to surround myself with people that can fix this. Because nobody's well, well, I think surrounding yourself with good people in general is always, um, you know, obviously like surrounding yourself with wise counsel. And, you know, there's always a phrase that you're the average of your five closest friends type of thing. Like, you know, I want my five closest friends to be, you know, multi, multi millionaires that are outrageously successful, both in business and in their personal life. You know, you can't overlook that, that, you know, there, there's, you know, we talked about, you know, that last night, that Denver event going on. One of the reasons I can't go there is because my kids have something I have to be at on Saturday and I'm not, I'm just not going to miss that. Like that's part, like balancing your personal life is important too, but surrounding yourself with people that are, that are successful in areas that you want to be successful and that will hold you accountable. Um, you know, I think that's the quality of a, of a good friend or, or, or mentor or somebody that'll say, hey, man, you're screwing up here. You're doing this crap. This is really stupid and it's hurting you. And here's why. And you need to stop. And I think that that's really important to have those people in your life. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. That's I agree. 100%. 
I mean, I've had gut feelings about things before I got involved in things. And then when it, when it kind of came to its conclusion, I was like, man, I was, I was right on this in the first five minutes. Um, so stick with your gut if, if you can. I, w- I mean, would you guys agree with that? Absolutely. Something you hear all the time, but you don't really know what it means until you've experienced it, which sucks. I wish somebody, I wish you could, I wish you could just go with your gut and not have to experience what it feels like to go against it. Uh, you know, I, th- I feel like if I would have prayed about my decisions, it w- they would have come out a lot better. Yeah, if, I if I would have done the gut feeling and then pray about the gut feeling, that, that would, I, that would have served me a lot better. Yeah. And I wish I had known that earlier. I think the bigger problem I had was that I prayed about it all the time and I didn't always listen. Uh, and uh, I didn't always listen to the answers. So I think that was probably my bigger, my bigger issue on it. <laughs> for those for those in the audience that are like, yeah, I'm not really too 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 uh, kosher on the God thing or whatever, just meditate. It's the same word, it's the same deal. You know what I mean? Like but, but ultimately there's a larger power than you, and you should probably try to tap into it if you can. Yeah, I, I think your instincts are there for a reason. And if you've ever read the the book, The Gift of Fear, um, it, it's not a particularly well-written book, honestly, but it's a very good book to read in that it uh, it illustrates down a lot of what those gut feelings and those sensations are. And it's it's, it's geared on a self-defense realm, but it applies all across the board in that uh, there's a reason that you have these instincts and you need to be able to look at it, articulate why you have the instinct and then act on it. But your instincts, a lot of times are going to be right. 90% of the time, they're going to be right. Uh, articulate why, figure out why you're having that instinct and then act on it and move. And, and you know, don't be afraid to take risks and to fail. You know, probably 98% of my business ideas has failed, but you know, the 2% of the ones that are successful have made me a lot of money. They've made you out. Hey, that's, are you about to cut it off? No, no, no. Go ahead. Roll, roll with it, man. We're Thinking of failed businesses, you might be looking at one. <laughs> no, well, here's the deal. Check it out. This is a really funny story. It's an interesting story. Not funny. I mean, it could be, but I'm, I'm, I'm planning on making a, a video about this because this is uh, the, the nicest piece of equipment I've ever had or worked out on. I had it in my head forever and I finally built it, but it's so costly to build because it's all welded. It's costly to ship and it puts you out of the price range. Mm-hmm. So is that a bad business? Yes. It doesn't matter how nice it is. If you can't sell it cheap enough for people to buy it, then it might be a failure. We'll see. We'll see how it works. If, it, if I can streamline the profit margins, just aren't, they aren't what you would think, you know? Yeah. Well, that's how but you, uh, but you have set yourself, on, you got multiple streams of income and you can afford to, to make a loss. Chris, what you got going on there is like, you, you've got a spec, you're speculating on something. You got some money invested. You got some time invested. If it goes somewhere, great. And if it doesn't go somewhere, it's not going to kill you. Well, and, yeah. I'll break even. Is what yeah. I'm well, that's, that's not a good great. business. <laughs> that's wonderful. I spent my first business I sold on a biodiesel idea only to get ousted by the mob, which is a whole nother story. But like only to get like literal nasty grams and people that showed up and that were like, hey, we're the mob. You know, like that hey, you're you're 19. Watch yourself, you know, that type of stuff. And it was like, man, I just want biodiesel and green stuff. And this is like, oh, eight, you know, I, was just, I just want this to work, you know, domestic fuel production. And they're like, no, nah, that's not how that's going to work, kid. That's not how it's going to work. And I was like, oh, all right. And then, and then what's crazy about that is, and this is why I talk to, where I speak on, on the speculation side of it. If the, the craziest speculation, they say in, in Proverbs, when I go through it daily, and I come through it once a month, and, it, and there's this line there that goes, wisdom is worth more than silver and gold. And I go, you better be right. Every single time I read that line, I go, you better be right. And here, here's my, my, my quick story on that, man, I was sitting at a table just like this, four guys were drinking beer and one guy w- just got back from Germany and he was like, yeah, so I got over to Germany and I realized I got there late and I had no cash, but immediately I went to a bar because I'd met up with a friend group and we'd been out to a bar, I have no cash. And so I asked him, Bitcoin? And I was like, whoa, w- what's this Bitcoin? having two years before that actually thrown like a pizza party to try to figure out how to fix the 08 printing. I was so pissed about it. So pissed about it. I just thought, how could they print $800 billion? I was outraged. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, man. Well, and and anyway, these guys at this table introduced me to this Bitcoin. And it was like, I was like, well, what what does a Bitcoin cost? Like $3. And one of the other guys like, well, there's only 21 million of them. 
And I'm sitting there going like, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. It's like a million dollar product, but you, $3, I don't get it, you know? And so if I, if I had been running my balance sheet, maybe on a monthly and I'd been, you know, I had a ritual where one hour a month or one hour a week, I had a mentor tell me 30 minutes a day, work on your finances. But I had been looking at my balance sheet and gone like, okay, I got this much in truck. I got this much in equipment. I got this much in cash. I ought to have 1%, maybe up to 10% in a speculation on this thing called Bitcoin. I'd be well over hundred million. Well, yeah. well, you can't beat yourself up on it. No, but however, but the interesting thing about it was, I still believe I was right on my initial, on my initial uh, gut feeling. Yeah, and that's why I have so much conviction about it now. Because when I originally saw it, I go, "Oh, well, this is uh, I know what this is, right?" And so, so for the younger guys, I mean, build skills, build mobility, be wise, and if you can, if you can, look at yourself in in a form of a balance sheet. As far as I think the younger, I think the most important thing to do as a young man is to build wealth and to build wisdom. Yeah, that's true, and and you said it. She didn't tell him to do it. Speculate a little crypto. It's the biggest slot machine on earth. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It could very well be the new currency of the freaking world. You know, and as could physical silver at this point. Yeah. And well, silver's know, not really a speculation for me. I think that's money. For you, yeah. For you, yeah, absolutely. But all of these things, um, I mean, as a young guy, there's so many opportunities. And keeping yourself as limitless as possible, I think, is going to be beneficial. But with that, you've got to add wisdom. With, with great freedom comes responsibility. Well, and, and picking who you get that wisdom from, I think, you know, one of the things that probably would have helped me as a young, as a young guy would have been to, to finding those people that, that are they're in the position that I want to move to, right? They're, they're entrepreneurs that have been successful. They're doing what I want to be doing. I think we, we too often, we take advice from people that we trust that maybe aren't doing what we want to do. And, uh, you know, if you're taking advice from, you know, your, your grandfather who worked in a coal mine or whatever for, for his whole life, I, he's well off now. He's very successful and that's great. But if that's not what you want to do, that's the wrong person to be taking advice from. If you want to go out there and, and build a business or something, you need to be talking to people that have done that or that are doing that successfully um, and, and that actually have a position to offer you that wisdom. I think we just need to be a little bit more choosy about who we take that advice from. And just because you trust them as a person or they're educated and intelligent doesn't mean they're the right person to give you advice on that particular subject in your life. Man, I hope you, I hope the listeners are listening. I hope you get some young guys listening to this because this is, yeah. you know, this is such important. Everything you said is so important. Be careful who you listen to and think about everything critically. Yeah. You've got to think about everything critically, including government medicine. The only thing, because I look at this really as an investor at this point in time, because I realized when I went out there, I thought originally, I was like, oh, I'm this big entrepreneur guy. And I still feel like that's in me. But when I went out there and got, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Mike Tyson quote. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've been punched in the face a bunch of times, but I got this rule. I just get up. That's my rule. Right. Like, that's just how I do it. Unfortunately, you're going to take a lot more punches in the face if that's your rule. <laughs> there is a moment where you can just tap out and, and tap out. <laughs> but, but my other, my other speculation at that time, which is what was, I had a mentor who fought me so hard on a new car company called Tesla and said it would never work. And, and I didn't back up the truck on a conviction. Uh, yeah, 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 it's okay. Yeah, we're gonna go fly his plane that he just, he just built re relatively soon. I could have bought a bunch of them, the same model because he's got my dream plane, right? But, but nonetheless, for the, for the young guys, when, you, when, you, when things are just, just there in the gut and Chris's channel is great, Financial fitness is great on, on what you should be eating, what you should be doing. Because if your gut's messed up, your gut's messed up. If you're not eating the right stuff, you're not, you're not, it's, it's a true gut feeling. It's like a secondary heart. But like when you have that, you go on that because, it, because you don't really know until you look back on it and you go, oh, okay, that's it. And unfortunately, I don't know, it's kind of like an infantry guy, a top left here where it's like, you know, the feeling. And when you're, when you're there, you, I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe. It's like any guy that has a truck or a machine, you just know how it feels. It's hard to describe it if you don't know the feeling. Mm -hmm. but, 
but in a gut feeling, you don't know how it, you know how it feels, but you don't know how it truly, truly feels until you know that you're going against it. And then, and at a later point in time, you realize, yeah, it was right. Mm -hmm. It's hard to describe. I wish I could describe that better. I have nothing to say. Is it like that gut feeling when you're going wide open on your tractor backwards and you stop right before you hit a tree? (laughs) Is it that gut feeling? I don't get that gut feeling. For me, that's just a surprise. Okay. (laughs) Because I always feel like I got it right until that moment. (laughs) Anything to wrap up with, Meg? No, no. I think I've said all I said in my piece. All right, cool, man. Well, you guys, I'll link to both of these guys' channel. Awesome, awesome dudes. Uh, man, hey, put, put your stuff in. What's that? Make sure, you put the, make sure you put the welding channel in the oh. description for the, for the guys that want to learn how to weld. I will put the welding channel. And then also, for the listeners, get in the comments. I will get back to every single comment that happens this year on this video. If it's like several years in the future, no guarantee. But if it is in 22, I will respond to every single comment on these videos. And, uh, and put it there and we have a conversation there. And a lot of times these comments spur new videos and they get addressed. So please be in there, comment, like, subscribe, and then go check out these two guys' channels because there's a lot to learn on both of these guys. So thank you for your time. And thank you both of you guys for your time as well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you, bro. It's good to see you, buddy.